Okay, welcome back to theCUBE. We are live here at VMworld 2013, here in San Francisco, live at the Moscone South Lobby. I'm John Furrier here with SiliconANGLE, joined with Stu Miniman, our analyst at Wikibon, and our next guest is Pujan Kumar, CEO, co-founder of Pernix Data. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me here. So we love talking to startups, we love talking to entrepreneurs. Uh, it's always the best interviews because we can always, there's never a question we cannot ask, like, hey, what's the funding like? What's it like being a startup? Everyone loves startups because it's hard. Mm -hmm. Even Paul Graham today of Y Combinator wrote a post that said he would never do a startup. It's just too hard. Most people don't do startups. <laughs> but uh, most, most guys who are, are crazy enough and smart enough to do that, thanks for coming on theCUBE. So the first thing I got to ask you is, what's it like here at VMworld for you and your company uh, and in the ecosystem, all the buzz around cloud style, hypervisor award, we just had an OpenStack uh, conversation with Rick Jackson from Rackspace. I mean, talk about what it's like for you and your company here at VMworld. This is again, for, for our company especially, this is an exciting time for us because this happens only once. We, this is the first VMworld, obviously. Uh, we came out of Stealth just about in a few months back and we are squarely in the VMware ecosystem. Like, once we go into the product, you'll know more, but essentially, yeah, yeah. you know, right in. Everything, everything that we do is centered around VMware. So this is, this is the biggest event of the year for us, and happens only once for us, the right, first so time. For the folks out there, talk about the company, right. quick, quick factoids in the company, size, funding, customers, product, and then we'll dig into some of the tech. Fantastic, sure. So, uh, we've been around about a year and a half now. We started in Feb 2012, uh, two of us, myself and my co-founder Satyam Vagani, uh, both of us came from VMware. My background has been built Exadata for Oracle, so entrepreneur by heart, and built a very large uh, business for Oracle, uh, and then went on to do a startup before Pernix, spent two years at VMware, and then here you go, right? And uh, in the last one and a half year, I think we have been the fastest growing enterprise storage startup out there, uh, building software. We have 55 people now. We raised a Series A financing when we started from Lightspeed Ventures, and then we went on to do a Series B just recently, three months back from Kleiner Perkins. So backed by Lightspeed yeah. Ventures and Kleiner Perkins, 27 million raised to date, and also backed by some you know, heavy eaters like Mark Leslie, John Thompson, Lane Bess, folks who have really built very large companies in the past. And they know the enterprise space. So Stu, I want to get your take on that, because yeah. we've been following so, so, these so guys. Pujan, you, yes. you know, one of the things uh, why we wanted to bring you on is you, you've got you know great background as you said you know you worked on Oracle Exadata inside VM we're working on their data services and, and now in a startup uh, can you talk a little bit about how we've seen architectures changing uh, and how Flash especially is, is changing architectures um, you know from Oracle through VMware into today you know what what led you to Pernix yes so again uh, it's like this right I built Exadata for Oracle right uh, and it was it sold squarely on one thing, it was about performance. The traditional SANs were not able to keep up with the, the typical data warehousing workloads. And we built a custom build appliance, it had gobs and gobs of flash inside, nobody knows that, but basically a, a, a purpose-built appliance that gave 10 to 30x performance improvements for that particular workload. It's called big data now, back in the day data warehousing. And now you move from that physical world of Oracle databases to a virtualization world where you know, we all know that virtualization has taken over the data center. And what has come in the way now for people to virtualize more and more? It's really com coming down to storage, right? Can the sands of the world keep up? And how do you really solve the storage performance that has been created by virtualization? And that's one of the things that led to the birth, I would say, of Pernix data. Now having done this before, in the context of Oracle where I took compute and got it moved to, to storage, it was time to do the reverse with virtualization and flash and get storage close to compute. Yeah, uh, so um, if we look at Oracle, the thing that they've done really well is they built the red stack all the way up through the application and it's optimized, you know, right. hyper-optimized for that technology. Virtualization in many cases is used for kind of a general purpose environment. Uh, Wikibon CTO David Floyer just published a piece talking about the value of converged infrastructure, mm -hmm. said the higher you go up the stack, it's actually kind of exponential how much value it adds. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about your thoughts as to how architectures fit and how important the application is? Yeah, so basically it's like this, right? So fundamentally what I believe is you know, virtualization is at the end of the day it's, it's, it's horizontal play, right? 
and it's really about coming up with a solution that can fix from an infrastructure perspective, do things. And, and these are the, some of the reasons that we, we did Pernix Data for, which is, you know, at some level you've got to build an architecture that is agnostic to the application running. But there's always the one person of the use case that will not fit in. But how do you build something that is not purpose built? Like you know, we built for Excel data, and then Oracle went on to do Excel logics, and you know, God knows what. But bottom line is, how do you build something that can be agnostic to the application that's running on top of me? And how do you build something that can scale out and give what the today's applications need from a performance perspective? Great. C can you can you explain Pernix data? What's the scale out story? How does that change the discussion of Flash from what we've been having today? We had some server based Flash. We have some you know Violin just announced an IPO, kind of the appliance based. There's all the arrays coming out. Yeah, how does Pernix data kind of change the Flash discussion, and where does it fit in the ecosystem? Yeah, that's a great question. So so essentially, look at the look at what what we're seeing out there. So fundamentally, everybody is trying to say, how do I really solve? the storage performance problem that has been created by virtualization. And when we looked at the market, we saw why do you need to solve storage performance in a way that requires you to ship capacity? Why do you really need to solve a storage performance problem that requires customers to rip and replace their existing infrastructure? Why can't we do something in software, right? When you can talk, and everybody talks about software all the time, but at the end of the day, they ship it in the form of a, a custom build appliance. We talked about Accelerator as software too, but the reality of it was, it was software, sure, obviously it was software, but there was a reason it was shipped as a appliance because there was no other way around it. But why do you need to do that? How about we give, think of this, rethink this whole thing in the context of Flash, Flash in the server, and say you keep your existing storage infrastructure for what it is good at, and it is very good at capacity and data services. Keep it what, for what it is good at, and solve performance in a scale out manner on the server side, and that's what we went out to do. We said, we'll solve performance with a software solution, a disruptive technology, but totally non-disruptive for adoption from a customer perspective. Similar to what VMware was back in the day. If you look at VMware, it did not require applications to change. You could run your Microsoft application, whatever it is, as is. So non-disruptive, but a totally disruptive technology. So that's what we built. We, we built a software platform that clusters flash in the server across a bunch of servers and basically build, build this tier that works as a data acceleration tier on top of existing storage infrastructure, existing servers, and existing applications. And that's what we did. And so it's a piece of software that goes in the hypervisor and, and does a So it's not a hardware of, solution, this is all software. It's all software, and we wanted to impact every data center out there. And the only way to do that is to build a true software solution that supports any server, yeah. any storage, and any application. Uh, we interviewed DRAJ yesterday from Nutanix, who's also funded by Lightspeed, a little li light, Lightspeed mafia in the storage business going on these days, <laughs> and all the right talent. But one of the things he said was, you know, when he, in early on, there's a lot of naysayers. Right. Because he was doing something different. Right. You guys have a similar approach. So I want to ask you kind of a personal question, then a business question. Right. Uh, when you were getting funding, obviously you have a track record with Exadata, you probably got a check just on, on your previous experience, but you had to sh share the vision. What was the vision that you shared then, and what's changed now, if anything, in terms of your execution to the, for the marketplace? So I guess I would say that we, we have been fortunate. We, obviously, from a check perspective, you're right. You know, based on the backgrounds, we're like, okay, these guys are saying something, you know, this might, this, yeah. these guys can really do it. But for us, what happened is, we came up with a vision. We said, you know, we got to give scale out storage to everyone out there, you know? And the reality of it was, there's one thing to do it in PowerPoint. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of folks will be saying this, but it's something different to give it in a product that works like like a charm. So think of when you when you when you look at a uh, when, have you ever created a slideshow for example? You throw yeah. you know photos in a slideshow application and it creates this beautiful video for you, right? So that's the kind of experience you throw you know flash, you throw your virtual machines and it basically gives you exactly what you need. So that's the vision we had, but making self that vision, configuring, self assembly Infrastructure. Exactly. That's what you and, were saying. And so taking that vision into a product, an enterprise product, that can be applicable to every data center out there was what we were focused on doing for the so last one. So did you have some naysayers? We were actually, it's, it's interesting. What were some of the naysayers? And so then, some of the folks who, who questioned us in the, in the beginning have turned around and said, oh, this really makes sense. They because got as it. Soon as, as soon as they saw the product in action, they said, wow, I for the first time I can, 
I don't need to think of capacity and performance in a monolithic tier. I can decouple these two things. And, and, and there you go. We it have all clicked from there. It's they drank the Kool-Aid at that point, Pretty as much. they say in Silicon yeah. Valley. Yeah. Stu, you have right. a question? So, yeah, so Pujan, you know, VMware yes. is you know, not being quiet when it comes to storage, when it comes to flash. Uh, last year they previewed what they called vFlash, and uh, this year they unveiled it, I believe it's like, you know, read, flash, cache, something like that. But in the hypervisor, it's a feature that goes there. Does this really, how does that compare to what you're doing? Does it replace it? Does it complement it? Uh, you know, how does that line up competitively? Great question. So again, it's like this. The, the whole market that deals with niche solutions, read-only, single host, has been around for some time, right? You know, now Infusion IO has had something there, and there's a whole bunch of companies who are doing something there. But the reality of it is what customers today need is something that they can use it as fundamental infrastructure. In fact, you know, VMware obviously is a great company, we're all here because of that, but they have violated one fundamental thing by, by doing this single host solution because VMware is fundamentally a clustered hypervisor. Enterprise customers are used to using it as a clustered hypervisor. And that's the thing that's missing. You've got to build something that's clustered, that's not just read-only, and flash in the server is in its early stages, right? People do not know, if you tell somebody that I want to statically partition my flash and give it to each VM, they don't know how much to give it. They actually don't even know how much flash to put in sometimes. They ask us all the time, how much flash should we put in in our server to really benefit from it? And, and, and VMware solution, for whatever it's worth, is a single host solution. It's a niche read-only use case, and it requires to statically partition flash, and there's a bunch of other limitations. So fundamentally, what I, I see is, it is a, is a big limitation from an adoption perspective for the enterprise, whereas you know something like Pernix is what enterprise customers are really looking for. Yeah, so, so absolutely, one of the biggest limitations on Flash in the server was that single server, you're saying VMware yet doesn't yet do that, you have it. Um, if I look at vFlash and even larger kind of converged solutions are, are, are growing, you know, mm -hmm. huge growth rate. Um, you know, how does your solution fit into you know, vSAN or vBlock or you know, any of the other converged infrastructure solutions out there? So there are some places where we are relevant, some places where we are not, where it's a, where, where it's a closed architecture, obviously we are not, we're not relevant today but in, in things like vBlock, totally relevant, right? vBlock is looking to put flash on, on, on their you know, server side. And <laughs> when you put flash on the server side, how do you really do what we are doing? They need a piece of software uh, like ours to cluster that flash on the server side. So we are relevant in some places, some places we are not. Bujan, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Always great to have you. I wish we had more time and we will definitely follow up with you. Where's your office in Silicon Valley? We are in San Jose, we're based in okay, San Jose. Okay, perfect. So yeah. we're, we're, the Palo Alto team will, will get with you. Worth doing a drill down, I mean, very disruptive. Again, like Nutanix, people, some people just don't get it until they, they see it. So we really appreciate your time uh, coming inside theCUBE and we'll, we'll, we'll do a drill down uh, on theCUBE at then Palo Alto and we'll follow up. Thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing your experiences. Congratulations on the funding and uh, we'll be following you. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with our next guest right after this short break. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I had to kind of reset my mind there. I Thank forgot. You. Going to Disneyland. Going to Disneyland. Yeah. I mean, these guys are great. Um, I think this is a revolutionary forum. Uh, up till a few years ago, I'd never seen this in my